Well, hello everybody, Pastor Randy here. Welcome to Making It Simple. Always great to be with you. We're going to jump right back into our lesson. We've been talking about the correction of God. Now, that's not a word that necessarily seems pleasant. It's certainly not something that we look forward to. But when we begin to understand the principle behind it, it, it doesn't necessarily take the sting out because sometimes it does hurt. But when we realize, when we realize the heart behind it, it really begins to change things. When, when we realize that God loves us, that his, his love and His care for us is so deep, that His desire for us to succeed, His desire for us to go forward in life and to be molded into what His desire for us is to be more Christ-like, that in the process of that, He loves us enough to say, hey, that's not okay. That's not working or whatever means are necessary, because some of us are harder to reach than others. When we begin to realize this, wait a minute, this proves, this shows me clearly, I'm in the family of God, that God loves me enough, that He's, he's concerned about my well-being. I, I read an article not that long ago from a very famous celebrity, and, and, uh, People were asking him, you know, about all of his accolades and awards and movies and whatever, all these different things. And, and they were talking about all of those different things. But then the, then the conversation turned a little bit and they said, what is your biggest regret in life? Now, again, you know, trying to elicit some type of probably, you know, I didn't get this award or I didn't make this, you know, uh, movie or I didn't accept wh whatever might have been they might have been fishing for I don't know I think his answer surprised them it certainly turned the article in a different direction his answer was indeed stunning he said looking looking at them in in obviously as they were writing the article he he said to them my biggest regret in life is I never corrected my children I never told them no. And he said, and as a result of that, they're a total disaster at life. Really can't find their way. So why does God correct his children? Because he loves us. You see, friends, our problems have a purpose. You might want to write that down. Our problems have a purpose, and this purpose is to help form and shape us to be more Christ-like. That is, that, is, that is the end game, because the more Christ-like we are, the more like Christ we become, the brighter our light shines in this dark world. We don't find ourselves blending in, but rather standing out. Not in an arrogant or pious way, a look at me, but rather this way is brighter. This way actually leads somewhere that's profitable. This way leads somewhere that has a good ending where the other way does not. You see, I would be the first to admit, I think we all would, no one enjoys correction. Nobody. It doesn't matter whether we're younger or older. It doesn't matter if it's words or, or even something physical when we were younger. It's not something we enjoy. It's just not because that's just not how we're wired. We, we tend to be rebellious toward that and maybe even it's just something we don't, we don't like. But if we look throughout the Bible, it's just there. Here, here we see it in this proverb, we see it later in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. It says, for th those that God loves, he corrects. What we have to see here is God's correction is evidence of God's love. It's hard to put that together sometimes, isn't it? If we're honest. But then again, 
when we stop to realize, wait a minute, what I do matters. The way that I do it matters. And God cares. When we begin to understand as we become part of the family of God and we understand then why the correction is necessary, then that leads us to the last and final part of this uh, teaching series. What? What delights God about his children? Or what delights you about yours? When they listen, when they accomplish things, when they meet their goals, when they get their first, you know, uh, gold trophy at the at the race, or when they bring home their first test paper and it's got a hundred on it, or they, uh, you know, say their first words, take their first steps, whatever the case, all of those things are exciting. But when they listen, when when they when they are respectful when they listen to us and they go about what we've tried to show them because we love them. Therefore, we they trust us. We see that bond beginning to form. It says in verse 12 of our text from Proverbs chapter 3, For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father the son in whom he delights. I, I sometimes joke around a lot about getting older but but as I get older, I begin to appreciate more and more the way I had the opportunity to come up. It might not always been easy, and not certainly everything was perfect by any means. But when I look at that in comparison to the world today and the changes that we're seeing, I appreciate the simple. I really do. You see, when I grew up, the learned response the expected response, in fact, but the the taught and learned response to questions um, or orders or tasks or what, whatever might have been the case was a very prompt, not when you decided to listen or when you took your things out of your ears so that you could pay attention, but rather the answer was instantaneous. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's how it worked. Now, some people in today's world may scoff at that, say, oh, yeah, well, I'm not going to be. God is delighted, delighted with our obedient response to his love. Wait a minute. God loves me enough to let me know that's not okay, to let me know that that's harmful to me or to my witness. God loves me enough to correct me. Wow. That should make us all take a pause for just a minute, to be honest with you, because when we realize that in the grand scheme of things, in the billions upon billions of people around the world, you matter. You matter. God loves you. And that's what he's saying to you today. He's saying to me today, do you know how much I love you? I've, I've said that to my children. Our response should be, yes, I do. I realize, I realize just how much when I begin to examine the evidence. And God is saying, do you realize that if I have to tell you no, if I have to tell you to wait, if I have to correct you, it's only because I love you. It's not, it's not because I somehow get some kind of pleasure from that, but because it's necessary to get you to where you need to be to help you. Yes, Lord, I realize that. Again, I've had that conversation with my children. Is it always received? No. Just like we didn't always receive it when we were coming along. We don't always receive it now. But I want us to understand this is part of being a responsible parent and God loves us more than we could ever even remotely imagine friends and I need you to understand that they, and God is delighted just as we are as being a parent God is delighted when we learn from his correction in other words the don't touch the stove when it's red conversation is 
sometimes filled with panic if one is approaching said stove. However, that uh, harsh tone or that high voice or whatever it needs to be is out of concern and love. And so when God is saying to us, stop that, don't do that, don't go there, what, don't watch that, whatever the case, he's delighted when we learn from that. In other words, when that correction produces something, an obedient heart, a willing heart to listen, ears that hear, as Scripture would say. In other words, okay, if God said don't do that, there's a reason. I don't really need to, I don't even really need to know why, because I trust him. I love him. And what God is trying to create within us, friends, is holy living. And again, we've talked about this a lot over different lessons, holy living. It's not holier, meaning that I'm better than you, or I've attained a level that is a little bit higher than another, and I'm a little bit closer to perfection. That is not what it says at all. The word sin, and we've talked about that before too, it's translated actually from several different words, it's kind of put together to make one, but it means miss the mark. It is not an exclus exclusive word about naughty behavior or about bad words. or any. It's so much more than that. What is the mark of God? Holiness. It is written in 1 Peter, but he who is holy called you to be holy. So be holy, for I am holy. That's a little paraphrasing, but that's what it says. What does that mean? The word holy means separate and distinct. It means don't just jump in with everything else. Look at it. Evaluate it. And if we have one that loves us enough to say, listen, I realize that's what everybody's doing, but that's not what I called you to do. And that doesn't represent me. For those that are going down that road, they need another example that says, you don't have to. That's holiness. That's producing something that creates a change for the better. How important is that word? It's in the Bible over 500 times. In fact, it said about 585. It doesn't mean isolation. It doesn't mean hide under the bed or, 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 or get under a box. But no, it means stand out. It means stand out. It means don't go with the flow. It means show a difference. We see many today trying to show the difference through an agenda-driven mindset. But that's not what this is about. This is about showing life can be so much better if we allow the correction of God to mold us and shape us into who He created us to be because we were created in His image. And He delights. He delights when His correction brings this change. Remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. In other words, he really does mean what he says. He really does. And we shouldn't despise that. We shouldn't despise his correction at all, but rather we should be grateful. We should be grateful that we are loved enough that he cares. That he cares enough to say no. He cares enough to say, hey, this way is better. God's correction, it is without a question a family matter. Why? Because to him, his family matters. Our challenge today as we wrap this up, how do you respond to God's correction? Do you listen or do you ignore it? Do you embrace it or do you get angry? Do you resist it or do you stop and listen? Here's our challenge for the days ahead, friends. Think about the fact that God loves you enough to correct you. Let that guide your response.
God bless you. Thank you for joining me today for Making It Simple and this teaching series, The Correction of God. This is the end of that series. We'll start something brand new, Lord willing, tomorrow. God bless you. I'll see you soon.